All right. Hey, everyone. Hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, today, I am actually going to show you something I've been working on for a little while. And it's really just uh, for me to kind of like hone in on my skill sets a little bit. Uh, kind of setting up some infrastructure. We're going to be talking about, you know, uh, a NUC cluster that I have. Uh, if you're familiar with the NUCs, they can be really, really, really cool to play with. Um, also, um, got like a Pi in there as well. Um, some networking settings and stuff like that. PF Sense, uh, how the uh, kind of the network looks a little bit. Um, you know, show like a map, kind of like a concept of what I'm trying to do. And um, really what I'm trying to get at is um, there are environments that you can pay for, like uh, hack the box and try hack me where you can you know pay for a monthly subscription and um essentially vpn into their their network for a certain amount of time and conduct exploitations and stuff like that on uh, new cves that may be out there but the one thing that i always uh, find that's not really there is you do a lot of the red teaming actions and some of it's structure they show you how to do it but then you don't get to see the actual uh, blue team side you know what did that attack look like uh what can you use to go about spotting that attack and so on and so forth so essentially what i came up with and it's something that you know i've been working on for a little while and uh, is kind of like my own mock lab right something that I could VPN into uh, with my Cali and then conduct uh, attacks using whatever it might be, a new CVE or Python script to exploit a web service, uh, some sort of SQL injection attack, uh, maybe pivoting into a uh, Active Directory network, something like that, you know, kind of like the sky's the limit, right? But there are a lot of nuances when it comes to standing up your own mock lab, right? And this is just kind of like my own video I'm putting out there, kind of give some ideas to some folks on how you can go about maybe doing this yourself. If you have the hardware and the time, I finally got to a point today where I was like, yes, everything's talking to one another. I'm actually able to see the logs. And without further ado, we'll just kind of jump into the concept, right? So here uh, we have Proxmux and Proxmux is really cool um kind of my general overall setup i don't have a subscription really don't think you need one uh, i set proxmox up between four different devices that are all connected to a switch that have internet access and a pf sensors in there so i can vpn into my home network if i need to to do any admin actions and so on and so forth you can kind of get a quick overview of what my resources look like memory, CPU, and storage. Um, not too bad, right? Some would say, dang, that's a lot, but hey, you can never have enough uh, resources. Um, so she's like, orient yourself up here to the top. Uh, clustering together Proxmox is actually rather simple. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials out there on how to take a NUC or a device and install Proxmox on there and then cluster it with other uh, Proxmox uh, uh, machines that you image or provision with Proxmux. Uh, I have a Pi down here, it's a Pi 4, and it's really just to kind of keep everything held together, uh, quorum and whatnot. Um, it's actually pretty cool. I mean, the Pi is not really much going on. I don't have anything on there yet, but maybe we'll add some more stuff. There's the first nut. You'll see there's a Cali right here. And uh, even though I can VPN into my home lab with my regular Windows computer, I wanted to get away from actually having to rely on a Kali that was in here in the cluster to send any network traffic over the wire uh, to a device that I would deem vulnerable to practice any of that red team action stuff. So what I did was is I said, hey, how about uh, I just go ahead and figure out how to do it with a Kali of my own using VM Workstation, right? And here we are, uh, I was able to successfully go through all the, <laughs> the pain in the butt, uh, you know, configurations on how to 
create a VPN uh, uh, connection from a uh, Kali uh, instance on a workstation, VMware workstation. So I'm trying to simulate that, like, hey, I'm jumping into a lab with a totally separate device on this totally separate IP, and I'm able to hit uh, everything. Well, at least what I deem uh, would want to make vulnerable to kind of give that, um, that, hey, you're hitting some kind of web service from an external IP and able to exploit it and then pivot into the network and then exploit, you know, permissions and stuff like that, Active Directory. And as you can see here, uh, I separated everything on these NUCs so that the traffic on their VLANs would traverse the switch that I have right here. Uh, I didn't tag the VLANs uh, on the ports um, uh, because I was actually um, tagging, which you can do with Proxmux as well and other hypervisors is you can say, uh, hey, I'll tag this virtual NIC with VLAN 100 so that when it traverses the switch, if it has that tag, it can talk to the corp DC on uh, VLAN 100. Uh, I'll come over here uh, if I want to set up some, a different VLAN for networking uh, for, let's say I'll want this to be the uh, web server that's exploitable from external facing. I'll say, hey, I'll tag this. So as you can see, there was a lot of things, not only networking and clustering and and knowing the, uh, that engineering aspect side of the house, but also how do you, you know, do Active Directory services? How to domain join machines? Uh, what is it? What does it look like with parent and child domains? How do you create uh, forest trust between uh, child domains and so on and so forth? And what the concept I'm getting at right here is, um, I'll go ahead and show it real quick. Uh, go ahead and pull up a new tab. So I have a bunch of tabs open right here. I do a lot of note taking. Uh, so here we have what the concept is, right? You can see all my tabs that I have up here. I do a lot of different types of things. Um, so here the concept, right, is, uh, you know, after I figured out the whole infrastructure piece and how to do all that, uh, I wanted to say, okay, all right, I VPN up my attacker box. I'm able to hit the DMZ, exploit a new CVE. And these and these these VMs, these instances might be interchangeable. It might be another CVE that comes out that I want to test. Uh, and I'll say, okay, all right, how can I do that with the whole lab setup that I have? And then how can I pivot into the Active Directory network? Can I practice those skill sets? Uh, how would I abuse any permissions? Maybe I, you know, I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see, hey, you know, you're able to do some initial access this way, or hey, you can get on a box this way if you're able to pivot into an environment, and uh, so on and so forth. And and this looks great and all, but you also have to understand firewall rules, what can talk to what, how you do subnetting and segmentation. So this is a lot of stuff in the works and. You know, it's just a project of mine, just a kind of like a hobby of just trying to practice, you know, knowing how the infrastructure works, uh, knowing, you know, how to do certain aspects and what the back end piece looks like kind of helps you to understand, hey, this is probably the route that I would take, you know, from a simulated like attacker standpoint or pen testing standpoint, uh, so on and so forth. And you kind of see like what I'm trying to map out here. This is very early phases, uh, nothing too over granular, but You'll see that like when you go into like labs, like try hack me, they'll stand up networks and they'll say, hey, you know, or we got this holo network or this wreath network or, or it might be like hack the box where they have some other network AD infrastructure set up. Um, it's gonna look like this. And so instead of me, I, I don't mind paying, but I wanted to learn what they were doing, how they were getting it done. This might not be similar. A lot of that stuff they have is in the cloud more than likely, but like on-prem infrastructure that I have, I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna set this up myself. I'm gonna learn all this. I wanna know how this is done. And I wanna be able to do it on the fly. I wanna be able to do it on tap. You know, I want it to be my own thing. So this is kind of like my own thing right here. And just you know, give you like a uh, like a back end piece of it, what it's all looking like. Uh, so with that being said, there was another aspect to it, not the attacking and the admin engineering piece, but also uh, blue teaming, right? So if you're not familiar with uh, Security Onion, Security Onion is a very uh, I think, in my opinion, a really good uh, scene to use when it comes to both network visibility 
uh, whether it be you know um, capturing or tapping or, or spamming ports uh, from the switch to something uh, and capturing traffic you know locally between the infrastructure you know firewall stuff like that um, but also host space as well so it can come in uh, very handy and like I said um, you know I wanted to learn both sides uh, I'm a blue teamer by trade I know some red team stuff uh, got some offensive certs and saw you know it's great stuff and all but knowing both sides and how to bring it all together in the middle of the purple is really what I was trying to get at and you're kind of like home my own skill sets like I've been doing this lab setup stuff for a long time stuff a lot of lab virtual infrastructure kind of like put all that to the test you know kind of see if I can get outside my comfort zone and do something cool uh yeah so with that being said this may or may not work but I was actually doing some testing and we'll we'll actually see if uh, what I am talking about can actually be captured, right? Um, so this is just strictly just network logs coming in uh, from the infrastructure, from the switch uh, through PFSense. And if you're familiar with PFSense, uh, it's great. Uh, there was a lot of nuances learning that piece as well. Uh, so how to get a VPN and talk to the DMZ uh, subnets, how to get the DMZ subnet that only talk to one IP and the LAN subnet, figuring out the VPN the environment from several different VPN. Like it was, it wasn't a nightmare, but it was a great learning experience. I'm still learning. There's so much that PFSense has to offer. Uh, they got this cool thing called like NTOP as well. NTOP PNG. You can log in and see like net flows and stuff. Really cool stuff there. But back to the main point. So I was doing some VPN testing to see if I could capture my Cali instance exploiting um, a Confluence CVE that was recently released in the past uh, a month or so. Uh, this is a zero day. They, they patched it, but the older vulnerable versions of Confluence are out there. And so I had to say, okay, uh, how do I set up a Confluence server? Uh, how can I seem like exploitation of that and how can I capture it with a security onion and so on and so forth. And my attacker IP is uh, this one right here. And uh, the confluence is being accessed over 8090. And so I was actually able to capture uh, some pinging going back and forth between the VPN and to the home lab. From the PF sense right here, it'll traverse the switch that I can capture that data, that network traffic, because it's, it's physically having to pass from the PS sense because I'm VPN into the environment. And I'm trying to reach another endpoint on a different IP. That's why I kind of separate everything so the traffic looks more legitimate and I can capture it with my uh, tap uh, or my span uh, port right here on my switch, right? I won't go into the switch stuff, it's very trivial. Uh, so uh, let's see if we can actually capture that uh, exploit, right? So here we have. Uh, uh, MSF console open and we've we've chosen the uh, Atlantia Atlassian uh, I can't say that sorry confluence namespace OGNL uh, injection right and let's see if we can successfully exploit the server um, through our VPN as you can see I have the settings the remote host set up I'm able to reach the confluence uh, server right here uh, no issues through the VPN, and we would be able to actually uh, capture that um, right here as well uh, through the switch. Whenever the, the logs come in, we'd be able to capture uh, my VPN uh, client connecting to the OGNL, uh, or excuse me, the Confluence server. So we're going to see if we can ac actually exploit that server uh, right now uh, with our Kali instance through the VPN and so on and so forth. So we have everything set. Let's just set a new uh, listening port to, I don't know, 8888, right? And everything looks good so far. So let's go ahead and run this and see if we get a callback. And we do. Excellent. So the big test here, after we have successfully uh, exploited a server that had a, a, a new CVE just, just recently released, uh, would be to lift the logs and see what that looked like, right? And a good thing uh, we have the blue team aspect to help us out with that. Now, I'll stop right here with the red team aspect. Uh, exploitation using Metasploit is, is very easy if you have the right CVE and everything set up properly and networking and so on and so forth. 
this is just simulating, hey, there's a web server out there in uh, the internet somewhere and someone found it and they're doing a remote code execution. This would be that first step, but okay. Uh, now, how do you take it further? Can we jump inside the Active Directory domain environment? Can we pivot? Like I said, I'll leave the red teaming stuff right there because you know I'm slowly getting to the pivoting more, uh, uh, you know, showing how that's done. But this is just to show the first piece of it, right? Uh, so we'll get into that later, okay? Uh, but now we look at the logs and we can see, hey, there was some connections made uh, from our, uh, our Kali instance uh, through the VPN to uh, our client, which is the simulated outward internet facing uh, Confluent server. So we have that and, you know, everything's being passed back and forth between a switch that's connected to these NUCs. If everything's working correctly, we should hopefully catch uh, the signatures and the logs that Zuricata will point our attention to. So as you can see, we have successfully caught that exploitation occurring over the wire. So it's a pretty cool concept here when you think about it. We were able to VPN into a home lab through it in a specific subnet, uh, exploit a DMZ simulated server on a different subnet, and then capture all that through a switch, which is being piped back to security union. So pretty cool concept. This is just one phase of the cyber labs phase that I have going on now. Just kind of wanted to show where I'm at in the process. Uh, if you dig deeper into the logs, you'll see that we did do the OGNL injection. You'll see that it did come from my VPN client right here on my Kali instance and successfully hit the uh, confluence, the vulnerable confluence server. And then this is where we would do our uh, deep dive uh, triage. We'll go way into the weeds later on on how to use secure joining cases, pivoting, correlate, hunting, so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, this, so we're getting the goods right here. We'll be able to capture PCAP, look at it, and go back and do further, analyze, uh, further analyzation later. But I'll leave it right here for everyone now. Like I said, I just wanted to show uh, what I have going on, kind of show you where I'm at in the whole process. If you haven't messed with Proxmox, definitely do so. It's really cool, really easy. It just works, right? It just works. And with that being said, uh, I'll leave you guys to it. Hopefully I can make another video in the future showing how uh, some more blue teaming stuff of the security onion, but also how we do the pivoting, what that looks like in security onion, put some host, uh, host agents, WinMob beats, Sysmon for more granular logging on Windows endpoints to make sure that we're capturing all the goods, try to do some uh, AV, EDR bypassing, uh, have some things I've been working on as well. Uh, what that looks like, you know, look, using Sigma rules and just so much more. This is a multi-phase process, so if the videos are kind of strung out between time, forgive me, you know, I'm doing everything up and down. So, uh, hey, this is a great learning uh, step so far, uh, and you know, if you guys like it, enjoyed it, cool. Um, so I really don't make a, a, you know, great videos, but you know, I try. Um, so, I uh, hope you guys saw some really cool concepts here. Uh, and if you guys got any questions, just hit me up in the comments. Uh, you guys take it easy.